Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. Today, we bring to you episode 259, Life is No Yoke with Lenny and Shalva Gale. In today's episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we talk to Lenny and Shalva Gale about how life is no yoke and all things power blenders. If you're plant-based or vegan, chances are you have a blender. Knowing how to use your blender to its full capacity is really the key. Using your power blender to make soups, smoothies, sauces, juices, all of that's going to save you a ton of time and money too. So whether you're cooking for one or a large family, you have kids, mature adults, uh, you'll get tips and you'll get recipes and ideas on how to make life that much easier. And if there's anything that we learned that was driven home during the show, it's to take the 30 seconds to properly wash your container after each use. It's made a world of difference in our lives already, and it's actually made my blender cleaner. Which is a good thing. I think so, yes. <laughs> Lenny and Shalva Gale, also known as Mr. and Mrs. Vitamix, are the couple behind Life is No Yoke. They mesh work and life passionately by promoting a daily blend. Lenny left a consulting job and CPA license to start Life as No Yoke in 2012. And today, Mr. Vitamix spends most of his working hours helping people buy their Vitamix and advocating for a whole food plant-based lifestyle. His partner in life and biz, Shalva, left a corporate training job and her master's degree in psychology to join Life as No Yoke full-time in 2016. Mrs. Vitamix spends most of her working hours creating with the Vitamix and advocating for reducing our reliance on animal products. I think we need a Mr. and Mrs. name also. I think, well, Mr. Chame. That's what everybody calls you. Yeah, but that's no fun. No. We're the plant trainers. Mr. Plant Trainers and Mrs. Plant Trainers. Mrs. Plant and Mr. Trainer. Oh, we could do that. We could. Vote on that, people. Hey, patrons, we wanted to give an extra shout out to tell you we appreciate how much you care. Because of your contributions, no matter how big or small, you've helped us to cover hosting and production costs, as well as give a bright young intern a chance to work with our compassionate company. And for those of you who contributed in 2017, you should know that some of your funds went to help support the Storybook Farm Primate Sanctuary here in Ontario. For those of you who want to help support the show, support learning opportunities for young plant-based students and compassionate causes, you can do so at patreon.com slash plant trainers or click the link in the show notes. And now for a moment of gratitude. I'm grateful for these moments of gratitude. I'm grateful for the moments that I take in the morning, that I take at night, and for these reminders when we're recording the show to take them as well because I really do feel that they impact my day and I hope that they impact yours. I am grateful for after a long day coming home and being able to get into my comfortable bed. And if you want to know what kind of bed I'm sleeping on, what kind of mattress... Send me an email, contact me, infoplantrainers.com, and I'll be happy to share that with you. People come to our house and ask to sleep in our bed. Because they like our bed. <laughs> Lenny and Shalva Gale, thank you so much for being on the Plant Trainers podcast today. Thanks for having us. No problem. Today we are going to talk about how to accelerate and ameliorate. Did I say that right? You said that right. Awesome. The adoption of a whole food plant-based diet using power blenders. And we're really excited to get into that. But before we do, what is your moment of gratitude? Well, we're new parents. We have a five-month-old. So obviously, we're very grateful for his presence in our lives and the joy that he brings us. But what we're really grateful for is that he was a terrible, terrible sleeper for the first four and a half months of his life. And then he just turned a corner and he's sleeping through the night, and we feel like we are new people, and I could not be more grateful for having a consecutive amount of sleep in a row. I can't even begin to explain how thankful I am. Yeah, it's like a cloud has been lifted over us. It's really wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. And Don't tell too many people. I know. They won't well, like you for it. We feel like we had it so bad for the first few months that we deserved we deserved it after five months. Totally. <laughs> I, yes. Of most things, I, I feel bad about sort of bragging about or making people envious or saying we have a really good situation. We deserved it. <laughs> Kids did not sleep more than an hour and a half at a time for the first four months of his life. So 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Must be um, all the good I, plant solids. Sorry, I keep cutting I, you off for your moment yeah. of gratitude. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. We could talk about more about that in, in a minute. We did start getting him baby food, and I think that's a big reason why he's sleeping. My moment of gratitude, it's the cloud got lifted over our head with him sleeping. The real cloud got lifted over our head. The weather flipped. You guys are uh, north and east, and you get it. Just feeling the warm air on my ankles. It may sound silly, but my ankles have my ankles and feet have been covered and cold for six months. So it just feels so good to have warm breeze on my ankles again. Sandals. Yeah. Sandal weather. I know, I know exactly what that means because I'm back walking outside barefoot and yes. I missed that through the last six months. So yep. that was really awesome. Being able to walk to the bus to pick up the kids, no shoes on, yeah. barefoot, warm air. Right. Love it. You're going to find as your son gets older, he's going to be constricted into like running shoes and boots all winter. And then this kind of season's going to come along and he's not going to want to wear sandals because he's going to be so used to like Just doing <laughs> things how they are. And then... Yeah, right. then, then you just get them used to it, and it's amazing. Amazing. I, it. <laughs> I still can't believe you're getting a full night's sleep after just five months, and I know you had it hard, but our daughter really only started sleeping through the night, I would say, at age, what, six? What? Five? Like, for the full night? I don't know. I just slept through the night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're like, I don't know. I was asleep. Yeah. I can't remember it. It's all right? a blur. But it it's took years, not months. And that's... So, you know what? Her diet may have had a lot to do with it as well. Because right. we went plant-based before our children went plant-based. And they were pretty much plant-based but vegetarian with still some dairy, still some egg in there for quite a while. So, you know, maybe at that four four year mark when she probably right. did really start sleeping through the night, it had a lot to do with her body just adapting to the foods that she was eating better and being able to handle that more. Most likely, yeah. Let's just I pretend. think that's a big that's a big thing is, you know, children are often given a lot of processed icky foods and we wonder why there are problems like that and a lot of times it's just the food that makes a difference. So we're lucky enough that we started plant-based before he was born at this point. Um, and so he, he'll he start that way with us. We did introduce some purees. It was so fun to watch him eat for the first time. Um, but that really is what made a difference for us. For He was exclusively breastfed before that. He's a giant baby. He's like off the charts tall. He's got a high metabolism. And so I think giving him those purees made a huge difference for sleeping. Was your full pregnancy plant-based? For the most part, so full disclosure, Lenny is 100% vegan, um, and I am a vegan in the household. I keep a vegan house, and then when I'm out, I don't eat um, vegan. So I was a vegetarian for 13 years before I even met him, so it's a pretty easy transition to do that, but I do eat some dairy and eggs when I'm out of the house. So um, when I was pregnant, same thing. At home, vegan, yeah. out of the house, not as vegan. <laughs> yeah. And I'm say. assuming you're eating most of your meals in house. Exactly. So yeah. we work from home. We, I would say 90% of our meals are vegan and in the house. Yeah. And that <laughs> makes it really easy for us to, to say here, here are the rules for, for our house and for our family. And there's no negotiating in the house, which means, you know, there's no decisions that you have to make. And then out of the house, really anything goes as you wish without judgment. And we find that that approach is it works for us, mm -hmm. and it works as a recommendation for other people. Yes. I, I think I think people it's easier I, I, for people to relate to a more moderate approach than sort of an extreme like you got to be vegan, you got to be like hundred percent plant based, all or all or nothing. I think that if we had eighty percent, ninety percent, even seventy percent of North America's population eating that way in general, we yeah. would be in a much different predicament than we are in right now in terms of what's happening to the world, what's happening in terms of climate, what's happening in terms of our own personal healths. We we would be in a different place. So I think that if a lot of people said, okay, it's everything or nothing, well wait, there's a there's a there's a gray area, let's go for the gray area, then everybody would be so much better off. Well, and that's something that we've talked about a lot lately is that, you know, Lenny is a vegan. Like he says, I am a vegan. I do not eat anything that has animals. That is my rule. But a lot of the people in my social circle in the last couple of years haven't said, I want to go vegan to me. They've said, I want to eat less meat. I want to try to eat less dairy. They're not saying I ever want to completely go cold turkey on those things. 
but they're saying I want to reduce the amount that I'm eating. And so that's kind of our uh, what we try to promote is eat less of the things that you know make you feel bad, that you know are not good for the earth, that you know are not compassionate things. And eventually maybe you'll get to the point where you don't eat them anymore. But you're right, if everyone ate a little bit less of those things, then we'd be in a much better situation. I think that's such an interesting dynamic that you have because a lot of the time you'll hear families that much like we started off where your fridge is divided and half of it is the vegan side, half of it is the meat side, and Mm -hmm. somehow everybody's cooking their own meals and it's a little chaotic. And doing it in the house, that's, that's very an interesting way to do it. And then outside the house, there's no judgment. And I agree and with what you said that everybody's got to find their place. They're comfortable at different right. levels. They start where they want to start. They go to whatever level of extreme or not extreme, if you want to call it that. But they do what they're comfortable doing and they do as much as they feel they can until they're ready to do a little bit more. And if for you, it's still eating some dairy products or eggs outside of the house, that's cool, right? Right. You do what you're comfortable with because the more you do, the better off you're going to feel and the better off the animals are going to be and the planet's going to be and there's a huge effect. So again, if everybody does something like that, what a difference this place would make. A huge difference. There are some people who can't handle that. Um, There are some people where if they give an inch, they take a mile, right? So for some people, they do need hard, fast rules. And that's because that's where they are in their journey. And this can completely be a whole podcast on its own. (laughs) It could. But what I want to get into a little bit is how the Vitamix can help fuel people's journeys, people's transitions, because you know, everybody's got Vitamix recipes out there. You know, there's YouTube channels specifically for it. Like, Mm -hmm. like, you know, like yours, there's all kinds of things that are out there and people are scared of making the purchase. It's a big investment and they just don't know what. And I know people will email me and say, or message me and say, I want to get a Vitamix or my daughter wants to get a Vitamix. What should they get? And I'm like, I don't know. And I just take a picture of mine and I say, here's what I have. At the end of the day, unless you have really specific needs, I don't think that you could really go wrong with your choice if you're willing to spend that money on it. But maybe you have a little bit more insight into that. And for people that don't know, a Vitamix uh, is a high-speed blender, right? Just in case somebody doesn't know. And you guys should tell us more about that. Yeah, the Vitamix, the Vitamix machine. It's been around for uh, about eight, it's, since 1921. And a family-owned business out of uh, out of Ohio, and it is just that it's a you call it a power blender, a high-performance blender. It's a blender, but it's it's more than that. It 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 it's able to do more than just smoothies, whole food juices, things like hot soups, ice cream, hummus, uh, doughs, dressings, flours, dressings. I mean, we've heard thirteen in one. We've heard so we love our Vitamix, and that's what we do. Uh, we have a relationship with the brand and the company, and that is our little way to sort of to support our work. And we would just want to make it really clear is we don't push that specific machine. Our thing is just like we say, we keep a plant based kitchen. Our recommendation is just blend some plants. doesn't matter what machine you use. Start by blending some plants every day. And then you'll get to the point where, oh, I'm feeling a lot better because of this green juice that I made or this protein shake I made after a, a, a long walk. And then you get to the point where you want to graduate to a machine like a Vitamix that is going to give you better performance, better, cons- better consistency, better flavors and last you a lifetime. So it's really like this whole plant based thing. It is a journey and it's a journey that we welcome people to, to get to get some information when they're ready. So how are they going to choose which one they want? Because I mean, Christmas time rolls around, everybody goes to Costco, yeah. there's something on sale. Is it good yeah. enough? Isn't it good enough? Does it yeah. really matter? So you made the point, a Vitamix is a Vitamix, and that's so true. They all perform, all the full size machines perform exactly the same. And so it really comes down to the look. We say that the Vitamix is, is, a, is something that's going to live on your counter. So find one that has the look that you like. And then the second big decision is now they have a classic 
design and then sort of a smart system. The smart system is is new and it uh, allows for accessories. There's some wireless and Bluetooth. There's like a lot of extra features in new technology. That's the smart system. And then there's the the classic. So do you want the smart system? Do you want the classic? And the then difference you, is features. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. Like you said, they all work the same. They all make creamy smoothies and hot soups and nut butters and all that stuff. It's just, do you want switches? Do you want dials? Do you want digital? Do you not? And that's really a decision that is a personal decision that we can help people make. Yeah. But but like you said, any anyone you put on your counter is really going to help you with your plant-based lifestyle. And I think Lenny's right in saying that it can be any blender, you know, start with a little dingy thing from Target and start on your journey, but blend something up, blend a smoothie for yourself, get some greens into the cup and get them into your system and you'll recognize how much better you feel. I think those 10 hours that you're going to spend researching it, you can just spend them in the gym. You know what I mean? Like there's other (laughs) things to do, just like take an hour and be done. Yep. Yes. A hundred percent. And and for all the time that people take trying to figure out the right one for them, there are never regrets. People, right. all while you can uh, exchange, upgrade, downgrade, people just stick with the one they get. So either... It's always the right decision. Either, yeah, yeah. Choose by price or email us. Like, th- it's a lot of what we do to, like during our days is, is help people decide. And it's normal. It's a huge, it's a huge purchase. A lot of it is features and bells and whistles. Keep it easy. So for someone who's never used a blender before and has a blender and they're looking to make their first green juice or blended plants like you mentioned just before, yeah, what would you recommend that they use to make their first be an awesome experience? Yeah. So this is so easy. There's three, there's three parts to a perfect green juice. It's fruit greens and seeds so you start with a little fruit if it's banana orange apple and then you add your greens so if it's kale spinach really whatever you have around and then seeds so chia seeds hemp seeds flax seeds a little seeds on top those are going to add the the fiber dietary fiber and the and the protein and all the extras all the extras and then from there a little water a little ice and to make green juice not taste like a salad the secrets are Lemon, a little slice of lemon, ginger, and if you really want to get fancy, a little spice. So jalapeno uh, really gives it a nice kick and kind of rounds it all out. So that's the one we suggest for people to start with because it's really easy to drink. You can start your journey there. Fruit is sweeter. You know, you're adding some lemon, so there's some tartness. Eventually, people get to the point where they're just dumping broccoli and cabbage into their blender and they can drink anything. It doesn't matter if it tastes like grass. But that's the one that we start people on because we want them to like it. We want them to drink it and think, oh, my gosh, this is actually really good. Why haven't I been doing this? And then they can kind of start to add or subtract whatever it is that they want to make it healthier or boosted with whatever it is that's important for their specific diet if they need extra iron if they need extra folic acid whatever it is yeah and that's a green juice that's sort of the formula for green juice now if you want to just make a green smoothie hold on before i cut you off between the juice and the smoothie you just cut them off i totally did (laughs) before before you get into the smoothie what i wanted to know is when you're making the juice are you just putting in a lot of extra water and ice to thin it out or are you actually putting it through like a nut bag or something a strainer. like that. The former. Yeah. So we'll we'll make a whole food juice. Right. Which includes all the nutrients, all the fiber. We we throw nothing away. Maybe so, some peels. Yeah, orange peels. Banana for sure. peels. Yeah. Banana peels <laughs> banana, for yeah. sure, but lemon, lemon you can keep. You can blend that up. And ginger, you can keep the peel. And ginger, yeah. just ginger wash it. keep the peel, yeah. Organic ginger, yeah. So we start with a lot of water, three or four cups, and then top it off with a lot of ice. And the ice does a couple things. It thickens it a little bit, it cools it, but then it also pushes everything down into the into the blade. So you get an efficient, smooth, consistent juice. But we are not straining it at all. We're keeping the entire fruit in there. And there are people that truly believe in juicing, and we definitely understand that concept as well. For us, the reason we don't is ease of use. Like I don't want to wash a juicer. I don't want to have to strain my juice through something. 
it's much easier to just put everything into the blender, pour it into my cup and drink it. And why waste it? Why throw it away? Yeah. And we don't like throwing things away. <laughs> and for us, for most of our clients, we want them to be getting all those nutrients in there, right. especially the, the fiber as well. And I think that also what ice does is when drinks like that are cold, they're also more palatable. So if you yeah. are going a little bit more hardcore and cutting back on the fruit a little bit, yeah. it makes it that much more palatable and, and easy to go down. Yeah. We're taking a short break to let you know that this episode of the Plant Trainers podcast is brought to you by Energy Bits. If you want a healthy, natural way to fuel your workouts or fire up your brain, Energy Bits are for you. Energy Bits are tiny spirulina algae tabs that are nutritionally dense, a source of mental and physical energy that is all natural and causes no stomach distress. They eliminate fatigue and hunger instantly with no caffeine, sugar, chemicals, gluten, or soy, just pure plant-based nutrition. One ingredient, one calorie, and zero net carbs. I use them before workouts or sometimes just as a snack. They make me feel great and give me that extra energy boost I'm sometimes looking for. I also use recovery bits, which are tiny chlorella tabs. I use them after workouts or when I'm feeling hungry late at night. Visit energybits.com and order energy bits, recovery bits, vitality bits, or skinny bits, and use the promo code plant trainers to get 20% off your order at checkout. The link will also be in the show notes just in case you didn't get that all down. Improve your energy, wellness, and waistline all at the same time with energy bits. Check out energy bits today and feel the difference. Your brain and body will say thank you. And now back to the show. Awesome. So let's move into smoothie. Yeah. So I just wanted to contrast between these, this green juice formula that I just talked about and, and green smoothies. They're basically the same thing. Green smoothies just have a little bit of a different consistency. They're generally a little thicker and creamier, maybe have a little more fruit. The secret to a really good green smoothie to make it thick and sort of luscious and creamy is frozen mango. If you can get your hands on frozen mango, it makes the creamiest, most delicious green smoothies. And, and it sort of uh, masks the taste of whatever greens you put in there. We have a, a sort of a green smoothie we make. It's called the Caroline's green smoothie, but it's just that. It's mango, uh, Apple, banana, mango, no. orange, kale. That's yeah. about it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very simple, but Thick, luscious, creamy because of the frozen mango. And a lot of people have an aversion to bananas. So I would say people that have a plant-based diet, they eat a ton of bananas and a bunch of avocados. And if you don't like those two things, you're going to have a hard time doing a plant-based diet and nuts probably. But people that don't like bananas but do like smoothies, frozen mango and frozen squash are actually both really good creamy emulsifiers like a banana is so you so can always use those too a lot of people are always surprised that i'm often suggesting to put beans inside your smoothies as well mm -hmm. so either chickpeas or white beans something that's not gonna smooth up something that's gonna make it really creamy and smooth also so if you're not going for the banana you know something like chickpeas doesn't have a very pungent taste or anything like that yeah. and it, it'll play the same part well and i think you can hide quite a bit in your smoothie if you're a picky eater or if you're someone that's like, I really don't like this thing, but it's got what I need in it. It's a really good way. We put cabbage in our purple smoothies a lot. Uh, purple cabbage with berries. There's no cabbage taste at all, but it's chock full of all the vitamins that a cabbage has in it. So it's a very good way to hide things that you need to hide. I think all of our parents listening, their ears just perked up and probably <laughs> probably some spouses too who are like, that's how I get them to eat that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Actually, baked goods we find and marinara sauce are the two things where you can just hide whatever you want in them. If you're going to make a muffin of some kind, you throw sweet potatoes in there. You can throw zucchini in there as long as it has some chocolate chips in it. Like any kid's eating that. Yeah. And, and one more trick that I just learned about green smoothies, if you're trying to hide the color of a green smoothie, someone who's a picky eater, ooh, ew, green, if you put a little bit of a beet in a green smoothie, it turns purple. And so it's not green and you get some of the, the beet in there, which I think by itself is frightening to most picky eaters. Mm -hmm. That's genius. But they won't know. They'll think it's from like strawberries or cherries right. or something right. that they do pick to eat. Yeah. Purple is a color that is good yeah great exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah and so also nice cream banana nice cream is a great way to hide some of those foods too so again i'll use chickpeas quite often or if i'm doing a chocolate nice cream i'll put black beans 
into not some my kids will eat those things so it's not so much to hide it from them and them to not know it's just but it was at the beginning at the beginning it was and i wanted to get their palate used to it so that they would be more likely to eat it on its own or in another dish and then when i tell them that that's what they're eating then psychologically they're like oh so i like that and then they say well if i'm eating chickpeas it's just like eating you know chocolate ice cream so that's a really important point that you just made there shoshana which is that we're not saying you should hide things from your kids because that won't help them eat those things in the future. You could hide all the things throughout their whole childhood and then send them off to college and they are not going to make themselves a salad with chickpeas on it unless they know that's what they're eating. So yes, it's a really good idea to hide some of that stuff in there until they like it, until they say, this is delicious. And you say, great, there were chickpeas in there. And then you serve them chickpeas in another form. Maybe you move on to hummus, whatever it is. But for them to know what they're eating is actually important because you want them to actually eat that way when they leave your house someday. Yeah, and I'll add to that. It goes the other way, too. If you tell someone there's something potentially gross in something they're about to eat or drink, they'll judge what you're going to give them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if there's... The black bean brownies, I mean. Yeah, black bean brownies is a perfect example. Here's our black bean brownies. What? Gross. (laughs) Black beans in here? Right. So that's when some brownies. Yum. (laughs) This this is one of the things that I talk about in our Picky Eaters program and the way that you frame things. I mean, you've got to be marketing all the time, not Mm -hmm. just in your, you know, you've got to go for job interviews. You've got to do marketing through your business or if you're an entrepreneur, but you've got to market your family also. You don't go like, hey, want to go on a long, long car ride? You're like, guess what? (laughs) We're driving to Disney, right? You've got to work it up and you've got to do the same thing in the kitchen and you've just got to eat. You know, I've had friends who have come over and their children don't eat the same way that our children eat. So they might say, this is not like the one that we make. It's a little bit different. You might not like it, but here, try it. Well, like, dude, I don't want that. You're not (laughs) going to eat that. that Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, but but at the same time, there's so much going on as parents that, you know, sometimes you just don't think about it. So here's our reminder to everybody to, you know, frame things well, whether it doesn't matter how old your picky eater is, they could be 222 or 200. It doesn't matter. You've still got to market it. You still got to frame it well. You got to sell it. So what about banana and ice cream? I know our favorite one is a chocolate cherry Garcia kind of um, little mixture that we have going on. What do you guys have? We have have a Black Forest one that's very similar probably to that. But I think our most popular one is our Wendy's Frosty. Like it's pretty much like a mix in. Um, No, it's so we were trying to make chocolate ice cream once, like a deep, dark chocolate ice cream, and it was a total dud. It just did not work. It wasn't the consistency or the color or the deepness that it was supposed to be. But then we tried it, and it tasted like a Frosty from the fast food joint Wendy's with no dairy, no additives, nothing icky in it. And now it's one of our popular recipes because it's so good. Yeah, so a Wendy-style Frosty. And then with the banana ice cream and also coming back to uh, chickpeas, we'll make cookie dough with chickpeas, Mm. right? Oh, sweet. Yeah, chickpea cookie dough. So we made a nice cream with chickpea cookie dough in it so that it just tasted like cookie ice cream, which is delicious. That was very good. Yeah. Guess what we're doing when this shows up? I don't know. I want that frosty. (laughs) (laughs) I would start with the frosty. The frosty is very, very good. Yes. And it does use um, coffee in it just to like deepen the chocolate flavor. You can't taste the coffee at all. And a lot of people use decaf. They use decaf if if they're not doing caffeine. We actually made it up when I was like very pregnant. So we definitely made it with with decaf. You could probably use some uh, dandy blend too. Yes. Has a similar, similar flavor. So what about busy people on the go? How can they use their Vitamix to keep them busy and keep them on the go and keep them on their journey to plant-based? Yeah, a couple things. So Shalvam does meal planning uh, on Sundays, but that's, but it's, it's, it's a different situation because we're at home a lot and we know that people are more busy and more on the go than we are. So some of the things that we do that, that would translate really well are, we make a, a queso, so, so it's a, a cashew-based cheese dip. It's by far our most popular recipe, and it is great. Like, first of all, it's it's a hot cheese sauce with a kick, totally dairy-free. 
It sits in our fridge for the week. We usually make a double batch and put it into uh, single serving eight ounce size, jars. Yeah. We dip vegetables in it, chips in it. We put it on tacos. It's for everything and it's always there. And so that's a good point with snacking. Like we always have snacks at the ready. So when you get home and you've had a long day, it's not, you don't feel like you need to make a big meal. There's always something there for you just to pull out of the fridge. What else? We, so we make a big detox salad. That's go. something that we make weekly. Um, and it's cabbage and cauliflower, cauliflower carrots. and kale, carrots. Yeah. It's got an avocado dressing. It's extremely filling and it lasts for the full week. And so for really busy people, you make that on Sunday. I'm a big proponent of batching your food at the beginning of the week if you can. It's a little bit harder when you're eating fresh foods. Like, obviously, I can batch a pasta dish for longer than a fresh salad would last. Um, but this detox salad keeps really well in the fridge. And then we put raisins and sunflower seeds on top. So... The other thing we do with meal planning is soups. So we'll make a huge batch of soup and put it into jars and freeze it. So when we were expecting this baby, we made a double batch of our, our creamy wild rice soup. We made four batches. Four batches, <laughs> froze it. So we had something to pull out of the freezer and basically just heat up yes. in a pinch. And that really helped us eat healthy, eat sort of like comfort food, that was hearty, but also plant-based. Yes, and that happens to be one of our most popular recipes by far is our creamy wild rice soup, which we always make two batches. Like it's one of those things that why would you just make one if you're gonna put the work into it? So I think we're gonna try that recipe. We're also gonna try that, what what smoothie did you say? The frosty. Yeah, the frosty. We're frosty. gonna try the frosty. We're gonna nice. try that soup too. Before we had Russell, who's our oldest, we went out on a Sunday and we were so smart. We bought this like amazing freezer, not the deep freeze, like a stand up alone freezer because I was going to cook so much and I was going to put it all away. And boom, he was five and a half weeks early and he came two days later. So I had the freezer, but I didn't yeah. have the food. So for those people listening, get to the food. The food's yeah. more important than the freezer. That you could put some breast milk in there. That's good. good I did. Space. And then I threw it out eight months later. Yeah. Everyone always says that. I'm going <laughs> to stop stockpiling. <laughs> so is this your, this is both your full times or do you have something else going on? This is our full time gig. Yeah. yeah. This is, I've, I've been doing it for six years. Okay. And I, I kind of fell into it. Now, I left my full time job consulting and a really unhealthy lifestyle to find my life's work. And I wanted my life's work to be health and wellness. So I lost you know, 40 pounds and changed the way that I ate and have been on a journey ever since of changing my life, my lifestyle and helping others do the same. And it just so happens that the tiny little niche, you know, the, the way by which we do that is blending. But it's the, the brand is, is, is lifestyle and it's us. And people ask all the time, what, is, what does it mean? What does no yolk mean? I was really into egg whites for a long time. And they, they helped me get, uh, build muscle in high school. They helped me lose weight after college. And I thought they were the, a, a, like a miracle. And so, I, so there's the domain that I figured worked then and could evolve and was a bit of a play on words. So it, it kind of made sense. And I'm lucky that it, it kind of still works. But I think the story of here's where I was and here's where I am now actually resonates quite well with people. Is uh, It wasn't just an overnight decision to go vegan. Um, it's been a long journey. And it never was, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to stop eating meat today or I'm going to stop eating eggs today. I gradually lost a taste for those things and found myself just not wanting to eat them after a certain amount of time. Every decision came naturally and it, it just felt right. And I'm sure you guys can kind of relate to that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean Adam is, is a overnight guy. But 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 yeah, it does. Um, it does definitely. No, we all it's we all have our own journey, and it's amazing how you got to it. I'm gonna leave this into the show if that's okay with you. For sure, I, fi uh, I figured I think you it's, would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's very important for people to hear your story because I'm sure people will be able to relate to it. It's it's great to hear those kind of stories, and it's definitely gonna help people to know that they're not alone. So it'll it'll hit somebody in the right place and help them make that change. For sure. What was that pushing factor that 
brought you over this way? It started with cheese. It started to make me not feel good. I remember having a, uh, they ordered pizza for happy hour at my old job. And I got back home and I, I, I cried on the toilet and I said I would never do this again. Uh, and he then it deals with God, <laughs> right? And yeah. then, and then I got a dog hmm. and then I said, how could I possibly eat red meat anymore? This, this dog is way too close to cows. I never really ate, ate pork. And then I, and then I couldn't stomach chicken once I, I, I think I learned that they, they purr when you like tickle their neck. They're like cats. Hmm. And, and then what, then what was next? Eggs. I, I, hung on to eggs for a really long time and then realized the the living conditions that they're that 99% of farmed chickens hens are are living in and then and then I think that was it maybe fish I held on to fish through through our wedding because it was a fight I wasn't wanting to fight I was I guess I was still a, a closeted vegan at that point but it, it was just easier to have a wedding that no, There's enough have... to fight about during a wedding, anyway. <laughs> right? I just like all right, mother-in-laws. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course, I'll eat. I had to right. I had to fight for uh, not serving dairy at our wedding. That was that was the fight, and that was where we were at. And and you know, I think a, it, a lot of it is identity. It's hard to say. It's it's weird to say I'm a vegan. I mean, even to my parents, they 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 don't totally understand. So it's a journey. It's a long journey, and I'm still going through it. And what I would what I say to people when they ask me, how did you decide? I say, just listen to your body. Your body will start to tell you what it needs and maybe educate yourself about factory farming. <laughs> yeah, definitely do that. Well, watch a video or two and and you're done. And then just put a reminder in your phone, you know, every month or every two weeks to watch another video because we start to become desensitized to it. So if you haven't seen it in a while, it means that it, it didn't really happen. It was just some kind of bad nightmare or bad dream. So mm -hmm. keep, keep it, keep up with it and make sure that you, you know, learn more and understand more. Yeah. That's a good point. Do you, how do you guys do now they're turning the tables? I'm asking you guys questions. Yeah, how do, do you guys it. deal with family? Huh? We moved to another province. <laughs> no, it. that's just a joke. We love our family. How do we deal with family? You mean when it comes to having dinners or meals together? Is that what you're yeah, referring to? Yeah, or if to? they're if they're uh, curious about your your choices, or if they're if they're not fully on board with plant based lifestyle. It's a lot different now than it was eight years ago. It's yeah. a lot different now. So eight years ago, I was tired of talking about it. It wasn't a conversation. It was an argument. It was you know, it was nasty. It was, I felt judged. I felt like I needed to learn as much as I could to defend myself. Now it's just, eh, I'll say I'm tired of talking about it or, you know, send me an email later. So it's really different now than it was. It's become a lot less about the food and more about us hanging out as a family, right? It used to be, oh, I'm not coming to dinner because you're not going to have food for me. And then it became, okay, I'm going to come to dinner, but I'm going to bring something with that we could all eat and share. And then I had to find a million recipes for everybody else to make. And it was more work going to somebody else's house for dinner than it was to just make dinner at home. So now, you know, we just had Passover and I told his mom, I'm like, potatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, yeah. vegetable soup and quinoa we're good it's we don't like, need, don't like, even worry what about do you want anymore. in the quinoa we don't need anything in the quinoa what? please don't put oil just put the quinoa on the table we'll put it with the broccoli and the cauliflower yeah and we'll we're good yeah it's evolved a lot over the years there's no question and i know that's a lot of people that's their biggest challenge is how to manage meals with friends or family and I think what we need to remember is it's not all about the food. It's about hanging out with each other and the relationship that we have. And food is just something that we tend to do. You know, people right. need to eat, but it doesn't always have to be about the food. Yeah. Although a lot of cultures, it is about the food. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, our Jewish family is like, we eat. Right. Like, that's what we do together. That's yeah. all the holidays are eating. But and I, I think... People have evolved in their own ways too. Like our family used to be brisket and chicken for Passover, and now no no one at the table, twenty six people, no one would eat that anymore. Yeah. Um. You know, and there's people that are on their own journeys, but we have so many vegetarians and gluten free and whatever it is now at the table that yeah. 
it's easier just to have everyone eat plant-based. And I think people are happy to yeah. do that. I have one point to make about the, the journey. And that's what my father is, is Mr. Meat and Potatoes. And he's like, he's so conservative in every, every, every sense. And it, just recently he started, he, he, he told me I haven't eaten red meat in seven months. I'm like, what, what, what? That's incredible. And he looks so much better. I could tell he has more energy, and he's so proud of himself. And so I, maybe, so, maybe someone who's listening can relate to that. That a guy who never thought that he would do that, make that decision, be that guy, did it, and is so proud of it, and is uh, uh, receiving a lot of praise and admiration, not only from his his family, his son, his daughter in law, but his friends are so proud of him. They think that's so cool. Yeah. I think we got to remember that everybody's on their own journey as well. We're on yeah. our own journey. They're on their own journey. And definitely let people know where you're at. I mean, you don't want to insult people by showing up and not eating what they made. And right. you don't want to overdo it by making them make you a hundred other things either. But you talk about your journey. You talk about your reasons why. And let that just marinate, shall I say, with, with everybody else at the table. And when they're ready, they're going to make changes. You know, people thought that we were totally insane. And then, you know, five years later, you get a phone call. So remember you offered to help me like five years ago. Can you still do that for me now? Yes, but there's a price. <laughs> you know, um, you know, everybody comes to it on their own. And you're not going to force anybody into anything, so let's bring it back to where we started when we were talking about your son and yeah. the food that he's now eating that you're making. I assume you're making. You're no longer buying the food, the purees. You're now making them. So maybe you could tell us a little about uh, the differences when he was eating the ones you bought, if he ever did, to when you started making them on on your own. Yeah. So we we did not buy any. Um, we got the go ahead from his pediatrician for him to eat food like way earlier than he probably than other babies his age. But we had actually kind of a artificial start, which was that our local news channel asked us to come on and talk about farmers market baby food. So on camera, we made a bunch of baby food and we're like, well, we don't want to throw this away. So we fed it to our baby. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how it started. But we, I think because I stay home with him, because Lenny works from home, because we eat the way we eat, we really believe in making your own food if possible. Um, I think those packets of food are fine. Um, they're definitely better than giving your kid Cheetos, but you know, they're shelf stable. And so there's something in there to make them shelf stable. And so we would rather have him eat seasonally with us and fresh with us and you know, I haven't steamed myself peas in years, but because I'm steaming him peas, I'm like, oh, these are actually delicious. So we already are healthy eaters, but we really think that helping that making baby food for your kid might help people eat better themselves. If you're going to the market to go get fresh food for your baby, you're not then also going to go pick up a frozen meal for yourself or pick up a pizza on the way home. You're going to be like, oh, sweet potatoes. Well, if I'm already making them, that's what I can have for dinner, too. So we do believe in in making it if you can. And, you know, I think we'll probably only do purees for a couple of months here and then move on to the things that he can feed himself with. And luckily, we're already having healthy dinners that he can pick the foods out that that are good for him and good for his age and probably very easily puree a lot of the things that you're eating already. So if you're making your detox salad and he's had all of those individual foods, well, why yep. not just, you know, take a handful and, and stick that in the blender? So, you know, a lot <laughs> yeah. of people are like, what should I give my child? What should I give my child? And the answer is, if you're eating well enough, your child should be eating what you're eating too, because there's also, we're setting an example. They're watching us eat. They're seeing what we eat. And that's part of, you know, I do a lot of work with picky eaters, but I also do a lot of work trying to get kids and parents to understand not to be picky in the first place and mm -hmm. how to set you up for, you know, the same, the same like we do in terms of adults with plant-based diets. Let's teach adults how to eat plant-based before they're in trouble in terms of their health and their have health. to, you know, work their way backwards. Yes. That's so I mean, really helpful. the plan is to introduce him to everything that we eat and hope that there are foods that he really likes in in the things that we already eat. But just to make it easy on ourselves, I don't want to be the kind of parent that prepares a separate meal for my kids that I'm going to eat. And of course, occasionally I'll have to do that. But 
you know, if I can get them to like black beans and I can get them to like sweet potatoes and I can get them to like green juice, then great. Our niece and nephew beg Lenny to make them green juice when they come, when we come into town. They're two years old. They call him Uncle Juice. Yep. <laughs> it's amazing. And and they were taught to like that because we were all drinking it and they wanted some too. That's right. a great, that could be a great evolution to your business one day if you need one. <laughs> Uncle Juice. Uncle Juice. Uncle <laughs> juice. A food truck, just Uncle Juice. <laughs> Serving the Incredible Hulk green juice. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> oh, and I could see it on um food truck. A food exactly. truck named Uncle Juice. Yeah. Uncle Juice. There we go. Want to <laughs> go into business? <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing is that rutabaga, I can't remember ever knowingly have eaten a rutabaga in my life until I started making baby food for my son. And now it's something that comes up, you know, it has its good rotation in our home throughout the winter. But we'll have to introduce that. I can't remember the last time I had rutabaga either. Yeah. And there's a good song. Eats his root of bacon and he eats Don't his sing. collard greens. Don't sing. <laughs> there goes the writings. Don't sing. <laughs> right. Hear all those people just hung up there. Dropping iPod. off. Yeah, yeah. Podcast I apologize. off. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so here's the biggest question. You have a Vitamix or a blender and you've been using it and it turns all white and it's like all black or brown around the sides of where their crease is. Dude, what's up with that? How do we prevent <laughs> it? And if it's already there, how do we just get rid of that? Yeah, Baking keeping soda your, does not work. Yeah, keeping your container clean. There's a few things you can do. First of all, clean it every time you use it. Always run a cleaning cycle and do it right after. It's easy to just leave it. It's easy to just leave it in the sink and not deal with it, but right away. Second thing is you can do a deep clean. So vinegar and water, uh, and let it soak overnight that can kind of sort of decalcify it. And that really helps take away some of the white stuff as you're talking about. And then uh, the last thing that you can do, what's the last thing that you can do? If you have a newer one, you can put it in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. So the thing that we get asked the most is, is, yeah, like turmeric turmeric stained. Um, So we actually leave it out in the sun and it makes, it goes away within hours. Yeah, just set the container in the window and after an hour, the turmeric stain goes away. Yes. Mm. So... Unfortunately, to like really answer your question, once you've already got the white calcification, it is hard to get rid of. It's much easier to start with taking really good care of it and try not to get there. Um, But if you are there already, like it sounds like you guys are, the vinegar soak does help a lot. I've heard people use the bartender's um, powder that you've seen, like the, I think it's called bartender's powder, but that helps to... But also just getting a new container. If you guys have had your Vitamix for six years or something, like sometimes just getting a new container longer. Mm -hmm. Longer, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Sometimes getting a new container is a really good idea. Like you keep the base in the machine, but replacing the container after a while isn't a bad idea either. I I will say the nice thing about the Vitamix is that the the container and the blade and the blade assembly, it's all one piece. So it does make it easier. I've had a back that had a, a, a Breville it was a great. It was a great blender. It was like kind of like a mid-range glass container. But every t- every time I had to use it, I had to like get the wrench thing, take off the blade assembly, take a toothbrush, clean under the rubber seal, and we had so, that with our Quasinart. Yeah. 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 And so that it makes it easier that the that the Vitamix container is all one piece. And it's also kind of a nice problem to have that it lasted long enough for it to calcify. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm. oh my gosh, I've been using my blender for eight years. Like, right. That's great yeah, yeah and then i'll be able to put that in the dishwasher because ours is old enough that it doesn't go in the dishwasher right yes the new ones yep you right. can put in the dishwasher we don't because yeah. we use it so often right like way more often than we would run a dish cycle so we still just do the little bit of dish soap, hot water run a cleaning cycle dump yeah, it out. thinking about washing it all day long and then at the end of the night just sticking it or a couple of times a week just sticking it in the dishwasher yes. for a good deep clean yep yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. Wow, you guys shared so many great <laughs> tips and tricks and recipes and details that listeners are definitely going to benefit from. You mentioned No Yolk. You mentioned your YouTube channel. But why don't you tell everybody where they could find you, where they could find their YouTube channel, and get those recipes, too, that you talked about earlier? Yeah. Life is No Yolk. You can Google it, and you'll find all of our stuff. You'll find our website. You'll find our YouTube, our Instagram. Those are our big three. Yep. So the website has all the recipes. We have a search function. So queso, search, 
right. wild rice soup search. Right. Um, Instagram, we share a lot of lifestyle stuff, tips and tricks, but also just pictures of the baby yeah. and, you know, how a healthy pregnancy is going and things like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, our YouTube, we try to post a new video once a week. So you'll find us under Life is No Yolk, Y-O-K-E. Yeah, think about an egg without a yolk. <laughs> That's how you'll remember it. And you'll you'll get to us if you type, if you spell it with an O-L-K as well. Oh, sweet. Because life we have is both no yolk. Ways. Yeah. Life is no yoke. We're going to link to all that in our show notes at planttrainers.com so people could find and connect with you. Yeah. yeah, we'd like to thank you so much for your time and your expertise. It's amazing connecting with like-minded people who just want to get the word out, want to get people eating healthier, who want to share their stories and inspire everybody to have their own. And it's just been so wonderful connecting with you guys. Thank you. We really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast listening platforms. We appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it ensures other people will find us too. Thanks to our patrons. To become a patron, visit www.patreon.com slash plant trainers. Even supporting us with $1 really makes a difference. Connect and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Plant Trainers. Like Plant Trainers on Facebook, join our newsletter, and check out our website at www.planttrainers.com for awesome plant-based recipes and a list of our services. Email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so we can answer them on our upcoming Facebook Lives. We hope we've inspired you today. Join us again next time and have a healthy day.